Hachi, um, incredible performance. Like just, just speak to me your emotions after that, a hostile atmosphere, a hostile crowd. You came into Dublin and, uh, and got the job done in impressive fashion against James. Um, it was good, man. Um, you know, I expected to finish him. I wanted to finish him earlier. Uh, I feel like I could have got it in the first round, like when I jumped it immediately for the guillotine. But I tried to adjust and go arm out uh, instead of arm in, and um, it was just a dumb adjustment on my part. I feel like I really could have got it there, but he did a good job of, like, um, defending it uh, at first and then did a good job of, like, I, you know, I did have a large weight cut, but uh, he did a good job of, like, grappling back. I, I expected, like, um, I know he's a grappling uh, expert as well, but I felt, felt like I dominated him a little easier, and uh, when he gave it back, it kind of fatigued my arms. Uh, a big adrenaline dump, though, you know, with uh, that crowd. That crowd's uh, it's crazy out there, man. It's like, uh, it's like a movie. That's why I kept telling my boy Mads over there. It was like a movie. Is that, is that the latest crowd you, you've obviously ever fought in front of, yeah? Maybe the loudest crowd. I fought in front of Madison Square Garden. It was an absolutely buzzing in there, but this one was different. They're like, uh, the MSG crowd, they, they don't get behind uh, their guys like this, man. I don't know what it was, but they were like, it's like a movie. I'm telling you, it was, it was something incredible. Uh, I always want to fight in front of that, if that's to be honest with you. It's crazy. Was James maybe, because there was obviously a lot of shit talk between you and him going in this week, you know, a lot of back and forth. Um, you said, you, you know, publicly you said you were going to run through him was he actually tougher maybe than you expected then on fight night yeah he was tougher than i expected but uh i knew he was mature um it was you know it was banter to sell the fight as well uh you know he's talking a lot i'm talking a lot we wanted a lot of fans here we wanted the energy here so um but you know he earned my respect and uh he did have my respect before it as well like i said uh as a competitor he has my respect but outside of that you know there's some moral codes i think you have to follow by and maybe he don't like me and I don't like him but you know still kind of respect his game and stuff like that uh, just after the finish you got up and you shouted something at James when he was on the ground what did you say to him um, it was nothing it was just more of us uh, I wasn't talking throughout the fight and James was talking a lot to me so he was like you have nothing for me mate you have nothing for me you've got shit for me that's what he kept saying so that was at the end of the second round if you look when I had him against the cage and then I crucifixed him I tried to land some elbows I wanted to cut him but, um, you know, I think I told him, uh, I think I just, I don't even know what I said, you know, should have helped him up. Like I said, I was gonna, but, uh, instead I think I was, uh, caught up in the moment. And I think I said, I, I do have something for you. What was the, the story with the, the weight cut? Obviously you missed the weight yesterday. Was there a reason, an injury coming in or anything like that? Or what was the issue? No injury. Uh, I think I just, um, I came in here on Sunday and, uh, I get quarantined till Monday. So I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I had three days to cut a lot of weight. And I just didn't hit my mark. Um, normally, I'm able to hit that mark. But my body stopped sweating when I was in the sauna at like 137. My scale was actually a little lighter. So I thought it was only a pound over, but their scale was, uh, I think, 0.6 or 0.8 from mine. Um, but it wasn't like I missed by five pounds. You know, I've never missed weight my whole entire career, 27 fights, um, amateur and pro. And, um, you know, I was at 37, you know. And to get fined for, you know, the amount of money I did for uh, – a pound, believe me. I tried everything I could to make that. What, what was the amount you were fine? Because, you know, there was a lot of talk yesterday about negotiations back and forth. Did James ask for a big percentage or what was the story there? I'm not sure. Our managers uh, discussed it and stuff. They worked it out, but it was, um, you know, it was just a normal fine, you know, the, the standard fine, I believe. The last thing for me, you seem to gain a bit of respect from the Irish fans. You got a few cheers as you were leaving. Did, did you appreciate that? Yeah, man. I like the Irish people. I like them all week, man. Uh, they're, they're like, they're one of a kind, these fans, um, they like his submission style. They like his submission prowess. So like, I feel like they could like me as well. And, um, when the dust settled, you know, I wanted to be respectful. You know, there was nothing but respectful with me and him when we were in the cage, you know, after that, um, after the fight was done, the, the emotion settled, uh, you know, I, I could shake his hand and, you know, um, I could now be a fan of him and I think we'll meet again as well. The weight cut was already mentioned, but you also ended up over here without your coaches. Could you speak a little bit on what happened there? Um, well, I ended up without my coaches because uh, one of my coaches, uh, his sister got very sick from the vaccination. She got, va she got vaccinated and then she had a stroke uh, like maybe like a week later. So he was very nervous. One of my coaches is a little older of a man. And um, of course, Jake Shields was supposed to come with me, but he's, he didn't want to get vaccinated either. He's kind of anti-vax. Then my buddy Dennis was also my other coach, my wrestling coach. But I made up for it. Um, earlier in the week, I didn't have, I came out here with my boxing coach only. But then my boy Mads Rennell, the number two uh, featherweight over there, he's from Denmark. He flew out here from an hour away uh, to show love, him and his coach. We call him MSP now. Uh, 
his other coach there. They came out. Uh, they showed love, man. They, they really picked it up for me. Um, Alex couldn't have held that banner by himself. And uh, Mads came in in the second round, and he gave me great advice. Um, we trained together at Extreme Couture. There was a lot of uh, stuff that I hear from, like, Dennis Davis, um, Eric Nixick, uh, a lot of stuff, technical stuff that I feel like I was able to capitalize on going forward in between rounds. Kyoji Horiguchi and Sergio Petters are going to be fighting for the title. Where do you see yourself uh, featuring in that title picture? I'm right there. You know, I'm 15 and one now with uh, 12 finishes. I um, feel like I'm right there, but you know, whatever Bellator wants to do, uh, I'm down for, um, you know, I, I definitely want another shot at the belt. And, uh, you know, I just uh, captured this name uh, with a big finish. Well, you know, um, I'm going to take the night, um, take a, you know, a week or two, talk to my management, uh, kind of just like reassess things and get back into training. Like I love training more than, uh, more than all this, man. I love to train every single day. So this stuff is, it comes with a lot of pressure um, on your shoulders, you know, with the fight like this, at this magnitude in front of these men of fans. So um, I just want to take a little bit of time, reassess things, talk with my family, see what's next and uh, just keep moving forward. The narrative coming into the fight was a battle between two slick, slick grapplers. It seemed like it was almost a, a battle of the guillotine in there tonight, specifically in the grappling department. How did you feel James matched up with you? He's tough, man. He's got very under, uh, he's got um, just underrated uh, wrestling, I guess. But he, he, was, he was tough, you know. Um, granted, I, I feel like I had a little bit of an adrenaline dump in the first round. In the second round, I felt like I could take control. I don't feel like I was that close in that guillotine that he tried. Um, I know he was trying for it, but I was never going to, he'd have to put me out to make me quit. You know what I mean? I never in a, in a fragment of my mind thought I was going to tap from that or, you know, I mean, give up, you know, you're going to have to put me to sleep. <clears throat> but uh, I feel like I'm still the better grappler and um, I feel like with some minor adjustments, you know, uh, they were well prepared, well prepared for me though. James Krause, he's a really good coach. He was very well prepared for me. Um, I just submitted Tim Elliott in a minute, like a couple months ago with a, uh, with a guillotine. James Krause was right in the corner. So I know that they were watching for it. They know my arm triangle. They know my back takes. They know some stuff about me. So they were well prepared. And James got a couple extra months for this. You know, we were supposed to fight in May. So he took an extra six months to polish up on his game to uh, make sure he was ready. Uh, Patrick, congratulations on the win. Uh, am I misreading your body language? Are you limping slightly or is that? A uh, yeah, um, I think in the first or the second round, uh, I threw an inside leg kick. And uh, James turned his knee in to, like, check it. I, uh, um, it's probably nothing major, but um, probably, like, a little light uh, bone bruise or a sprain. Right. But, you know, he, he, did a good, uh, he did a good check on my leg, and uh, my ankle was pretty blown up right now. So my left ankle is pretty hurt. Right. Fair. And, uh, again, the, pretty much everybody that's touched on it so far, the battle of two of the best grapplers in the Bellator bantamweight division. You'd said coming into this bout that you were going to walk through James, and I think you've kind of admitted that it wasn't, you won clearly, but it wasn't, you didn't necessarily walk through him. But where would you put James within the bantamweight rankings? Not necessarily pick a number, but like, is he near the top? Is he in the middle? Is he down the bottom? What would you say? That's not for me to decide. I don't know. I feel like, you know, you just have to look at the end result, you know. I finished him, um, you know, and that's just a matter. If there was no ref in there and I could keep joking him, you know, that would be a kill for me. So, you know, I don't know. Um, feel like sometimes it doesn't go just like you run them right over. But if he would have got out of the guillotine, I think he would have had a lot more trouble because he's right. giving me mount. And then I'm in a position to throw some elbows. I'm in a position to posture up. And I'm in a position where he's actually fatigued, tired now. Right, yeah. And now he's on his back. And uh, as mentioned, we have the, the title fight coming up between Sergio and, and Kyoji coming up very soon. Uh, I'm wondering if your next move, hopefully you're injury free and there's nothing, there's no issues yeah, with your leg or anything like that. But in terms of, um, I'm wondering how much do you think about getting revenge against Juan Archuleta? Is that a big thing in your mind? Cause he's right up there. I'd imagine that a win against him puts you firmly in the conversation for a title shot. You know, I'm hoping that they go for a million dollar tournament at this weight class. That's what I'm really hoping for. Um, you know, they have the, some of the highly touted best band weights in the world. I mean, or in the division, should I say that could mix in in the world as well. I mean, uh, Horiguchi, <clears throat> Sergio Pettis is the champion, Juan Archuleta, Rufian Stats, he's 17-1, and one. Magomed's 18-2, and two. myself, um, James, Leandro Higo, uh, all these guys, man, I feel like they should do a million-dollar tournament and, uh, you know, just let us all fight each other. And, uh, you know, I feel like with the names that we have, million-dollar tournament suffices our, our weight class. And I feel like, you know, some of us have families, some of us have kids. You know what I mean? Some of us, you know, uh, I feel like it would be a very good um, grand prize for 
one of us to win. And I feel at Bantamweight, all of us are such high level competitors that no one would like, it would be no boring fights. You know what I mean? You put us in a mil- for a fight for a million dollars, that would be the craziest tournament. You know what I mean? I think it'd be better than heavyweight, light heavyweight. Maybe not, I mean, just up there with the 45 pound one too. You know what I mean? Hey, Pachi, how you doing, man? Just it. Sorry. Yo, um, congrats on the win, man. Uh, I know you mentioned there you've been training at Extreme Couture with guys like Dennis Davis. Mads was in your corner tonight. Yeah, Eric, uh, sick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shields, all them guys. How, how beneficial has that been to your to your training? Just talk to me a bit about the level. It's been so beneficial. Um, Extreme Couture has so many great uh, fighters and so many great coaches. And the atmosphere in the room, like, you know, you can't get it better than a Monday at Eric's class. You know, you can't get it better than uh, – that, that's how we start the week. You can't get it better working with guys like Jake, working with guys like Mads. Um, Dan Ige, Kai Kamaka, uh, Boston, Salmon, like my man right there, he helped me out last week. Uh, Kobe Fair. Um, there's so many really good fighters, you know what I mean? And Kobe's one of my boys. He's coming up, 125-pounder, 135-pounder. He's going to be on the scene soon. Um, there's just so many good coaches out there. And then on top of that, uh, you know, just being in Vegas, 10th Planet, Coach Casey um, welcomes, you know, everyone in. Uh, just such a... There's so many places to train in Las Vegas, and they're so open. And everyone, uh, you know, you could really learn a lot from each uh, each individual gym and each individual person. I pick a lot of brains, and um, you know, uh, there's so many great uh, athletes and uh, competitors out there. I really feel like I'm in a good fit in Vegas. Yeah, that's great, man. And I know you mentioned the uh, match against Tim Elliott as well. Was that on the High Rollers BJJ? Yeah. Uh, have you got any more tournaments like that coming up? Um, I was actually planning on scheduling to. I was going to go on High Rollers next uh, Friday or Saturday night, um, as long as this went well. But I don't know how, how my ankle is going to feel, so I'm going to wait till Monday and reassess it. But if, if it is if it is all right, I wouldn't mind rolling at High Rollers. I like to do it for fun. Um, I like to do jujitsu for fun. I like to compete for fun. It jujitsu is a lot easier for me um, to compete in because it doesn't have this weighted pressure. You're not getting uh, brain trauma. You're not getting hit in the head, and um, it's just you're not going through a grueling camp. You know, I feel like I could just roll and have fun. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just like some, one of my hobbies as well. And it keeps me brushing up on uh, my jujitsu and also being able to compete against guys that are also in the high level ranks in Bellator, uh, UFC, PFL, and all these promotions, you know, there's no, um, it's not like you can't cross promote, you know what I mean? So I could still go potentially get submissions over guys in other promotions as well. Yeah. Come on. Congrats on the win, bro. Thank you. All good. Thank you. All right. I'll say guys. Thanks. Recording stopped.